name is Tavos and today we are going to talk a bit about one of the most famous, if not the most famous, hunter in Battletech history. The Bounty Hunter is a legend among mech warriors, known for shady work and a very green marauder. And also known for never revealing their face. Now, as a little meta comment, this might sound familiar and I'm sure that there were more than a little bit of Boba Fett going into the inspiration of this character. But if you're going to dive into the universe, have a look at who is the Bounty Hunter. The Bounty Hunter started showing up in the Inner Sphere 2900s, wearing a full cover Spec Ops armor and riding a loud green Warhammer. Sometimes they rode alone and sometimes with a lance to back them up. Rounding up criminals and pirates, the early Bounty Hunters seemed to carry a personal creed. Not much else is known. But as time went by and the Innersphere slowly turned into a new millennium, the behavior of the bounty hunters changed. More often than not, Ray Hunter rode into battle with a lance, and slowly the once gallant image of the hunter darkened, going from hunting bandits to taking contracts on anyone from whoever could pay. Many say this is the result of the original bounty hunter passing the mantle on to a new pilot. But since no one had seen the bounty hunter's face, nobody could say for sure. But what is known is that the bounty hunter did not seem to care that the image of the daring adventurer faded into little more than a bandit themselves. In fact, over the coming years, the hunters seemed to take an odd pleasure in playing the houses against each other, acting as a big fish in a fairly small pond in many ways. By 3014, Things would change again. In the middle of the burning Merrick Civil War, the hunter worked side by side with the famed mercenary unit Wolf's Dragoons. Working as a scout for then Lieutenant Natasha Kurensky, their job was to recon a set of ravines. Having in the call for all clear, Natasha's regiment walked right into an ambush. It is still unclear if this was an oversight on the part of the hunter or if they got paid to lay the ambush themselves. But once the dust settled, Natasha had been forced to eject and her lance was reduced down to a single survivor. The hunter on the other hand sported a brand new marauder. This kicked off a long rivalry between the two and they would clash at least two more times. Once in 3024, where the hunter again laid a trap for Kerensky it failed but the cost of two of Kerensky's mech warriors. The final time they met was in 3027, as they saw the same field of battle hired by opposing sides. Being on a head-on collision, the two were forced to work together when their employers suddenly pulled out of the situation, stranding both mech warriors on a very hostile planet. And even if the blood feud temporarily halted as they fought their way out, they never really forgave each other. After this, it is said that the mantle of the bounty hunter changed again. For a brief time, it is rumored that it had been carried by former Wolf Dragoons officer Michi Nokatsuna as he extracted vengeance against the warlord Greg Samsonov. But once his deed was done, it is said that the title and legacy changed hands again. During the 3030s, the Bounty Hunter was back to form, cleaning house and eliminating the competition as they took up Bounty Hunters left and right. In some ways, this culminated on the, in 3047, as they took out fellow hunter Isabella Cygnus, a Bounty Hunter who themselves claimed to be the Bounty Hunter. This little trademark dispute ended in a rather grisly fashion. Over the next years, the sightings of the Bounty Hunter diminished right up until the clans came knocking. It is unknown exactly how many encounters the hunter had with the clans, but somewhere along the line they picked up a state-of-the-art timber wolf. It is also surmised that the highly ritualistic nature of the clans most likely fit the rather single combat focused hunter like a glove, explaining how one could lay hands on such a prize. By 3051, 
the name and image of the bounty hunter have more or less faded into legend, and it would take all the way up to 3067 before the said legend burst back onto the scene, in a swan song worthy the ticket price. Being paid to go after Kai Alad Liao, it came down to single combat, the grizzled hunter against the shining duke. And as had happened many times before, once the dust settled, the hunter stood victorious. After this, the legend rode off, and it would take seven years before anyone spotted the green livery of the hunter again. But that, that is a story for another time. Now, the hunter himself is, or themself, I should say, it's more than one person having the hunter, and is most famous for the green battle make. The exact make and model varies, but um, what always stays consistent is the green paint and, for some odd reason, the stamping of Siebel symbols on it. That would be a bit like painting a dollar sign on a tank. Now, of course, after this, more people would take up the mantle, but this we then move into the later eras, and I'm going to cover that in another video sometime. As for painting, I did my own take on this. It's not an exact replica of anything, but I add a bit of gold because I, I mean, if you're just going to stamp dollar signs when you make a little bit of gold, can't go wrong either. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this sort of mixed painting lore video. If you like more of these, I have a few more characters I'm considering painting mix for. So just give me a shout in the comments on what you'd like to see. And I am sure we can make something up. Until next time, stay safe, be kind, and play fair. Bye.